So you own a boat. Awesome. Confused how to tie it up properly and keep it safe at the dock? You're not alone. Stay tuned to find out more. Hi, I'm Sean, and welcome to Lens Cove Lessons in Boating. Do you agree that tying up your boat at a dock can be a little bit stressful? You've got a big investment and you want to keep it safe. There are some common tips and tricks, and we're going to demonstrate that along with some best practices so you feel comfortable tying up your boat alongside the dock. Today you will learn how to tie a knot to a ring or a cleat, why the bow line is longer than the stern line, and what length it should be, why the spring line is the most important line, and a few other things to remember when you're tying up. When tying to a ring, it's a little bit trickier and often confuses people. You take the ring and you put a little bit of the rope through, and then you take the loose end and go through that and pull out enough that you can loop it around twice the line going to the boat. That's solid. This is what not to do. It's decorative, but not very strong. It looks pretty, but it won't hold. When you have a cleat, on the dock, you want to ideally come at an angle from the boat to the back side of the cleat, like this. And then we wrap it over our hand, go on the front side, and repeat on the back side. That is enough, although you can add more if it makes you feel more comfortable. The bow line should be approximately the length of the boat. We make it the length of the boat so it's still long enough to do a spring line. When you don't have a spring line, there is a lot of movement forward and back. The spring line is what's going to protect your boat from rubbing up against the dock or hitting things in front of it or behind. A couple other things to remember. When you're on a body of water that may raise and lower if there are tides or if you're on a controlled lake where they lower the boat over the season, make sure you put enough slack in your line to allow for that lowering or raising on a week-to-week -week basis between the times you visit the boat. Also, good fenders are a must. It's not really covered in this video, but you want to have at least two fenders for a boat of this size and probably three for a boat uh, that's 20 foot or longer and as many as five on really big boats. Thirdly, three good lines takes really good care of your boat. Don't go cheap on the lines because fiberglass repair or repairs to your aluminum boat are very expensive. Boating is a ton of fun, so keep it that way by tying up your boat well, using best practices, using good lines, and keeping your investment safe. So remember, make sure your bow line is long enough, make sure you have enough lines on board, keep some spares, and grab some good fenders. There's a lot to think about when owning a boat and hopefully today we've shed some light on some best practices for you. Check out the description below for a link to a blog about boat docking and some other great resources you'll hopefully find helpful. Thank you for joining us on Lens Cove Lessons in Boating for today's video. Remember to like this video and subscribe for more. Be safe, have fun, and we'll see you out on the water.